I think there's a real national conversation that's begun in this country, and and part of that I'm sure is because we've uh, done reporting on this, and and the and the other part of this is simply that people want to know how they can make a difference in their own community, and you know in the 1950s and 60s, nine out of every ten things we bought was made in America. Nobody even thought about it, and today it's less than half of what we buy is made in America. But it's this notion that if that if we all bought just one more thing in the next year, spent sixty-four dollars uh, more on a Made in America item this year, we could collectively create 200,000 jobs right now. Um, economists across the board have agreed on this, that uh, if, we all just, if we all just thought, I wonder if I bought something Made in America this year, would it make a difference? They, they resoundingly say it would. I think what we're seeing um, all, all over the world are middle classes that are that are exploding. We're seeing it in China, we're seeing it in India, we're seeing it in Brazil. And, and as we see that, as they grow in numbers, they also grow in power. And while their wages aren't even close to what we what we pay here in America, they are on the rise. They're beginning to demand higher pay. And as companies here in America take a look at their own cost structure, what it costs to ship products, what it costs to employ an entire workforce overseas and communicate with them 13 hours ahead and and then ship the products back to the store shelves here in America a lot of companies are saying well you know what it might make better sense if we just uh, explore whether or not we should bring that manufacturing back and we're starting to see that uh, already I think we do. I, I mean, I think there's a debate in this country about what what we want to manufacture now. Um, and a lot of economists will tell you we have to manufacture the items that are that have a multiplier effect. That that item then gets put into another item, which then gets put into another item, so we can employ multiple people. Um, that perhaps we don't want to make the socks for the world anymore. That that uh, we can't compete against $14 a day wages in China at the sock factory. But that we do want to make you know appliances like the Viking stove, which uh, is high-end, but, but is sort of the high-tech stove for the world, um, that we want to find products that we put our own skill and our own sort of intelligence that, that it took to put it together here in this country that sets us apart from the other countries. I think what's uh, unique to Philadelphia and other cities like it uh, is this sense that people grow up here, they go to school here, or they might go to school elsewhere, but then they come back. I think Philadelphia is one of those towns that people take pride in, um, that their extended families are still here, and you see it and you hear it everywhere when you walk around. You know, I work for ABC, so I know the power of Channel 6 in this town, the action news theme that hasn't changed in decades, people who say, I've grown up with Jim Gardner, uh, the sports teams are legendary here, and I think so is the American pride in making things here. So more than made in America, it's made in Philadelphia. Thank you.